Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back. A little bad company there. This is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show. Hanging out with bad company, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm probably bringing I'm probably bringing your your rep down no. by you hanging with me. No, I'd say <laughs> it's definitely the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You you've got accomplishments. You're like a drummer and everything, and got talent. <laughs> That's an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, I've tried it, and anything better than just beating is 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 yeah accomplishment uh, it's just beating things with sticks <laughs> <laughs> but it's in time and and i have no time <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh go ahead and throw that in there ladies and gentlemen the time yeah <laughs> yeah i'd have to have a mirror though you know <laughs> I'm glad you caught that yeah. i didn't know that would kind of fall past I, you there no i've, I've more seen stay in the time yeah more stay <laughs> is uh, somebody messed my hair up <laughs> He stole Purple Rain, by the way, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah he totally did. stole the movie. He did steal that movie. <laughs> of course, it, you know, that's kind of like taking candy from a baby, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll get a call. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, this is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show. Welcome back for the second half hour of fun and excitement. Real quickly here, I always want to cover something, and, and then we'll try to get to some calls we've got holding. In the continuing saga of the fruitless drug war our company spends untold billions of dollars on each year, both directly in this country and in other countries as well, the Mexican president-elect, and I'm going to screw this name up, I'll tell you right now, but it's uh, Enrique Pina, and I guess it's Nito, Nito, or N-I-E-T-O. Uh, yeah. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Well, he has suggested he would like to refocus the war on drugs in his country from the people running the cartels to the street-level criminals and dealers. Now, some experts claim this could result in more instances of human rights abuses in the quest for a perceived greater safety for the citizens of that country. An argument frequently heard over and over in countries where the so-called drug war is being fought including this one, the United States. Manuel Zamora, who is an assistant professor at the Center for Security Studies, which is located at Angelo State University in Texas, has some reservations about this increased security or scrutiny of street-level dealers. He stated, quote, with human rights questions already prevalent in Mexico, this strategy will likely lead to more human rights complaints and abuses. Also, Gustavo de la Rosa Hickerson, the Juarez Ombudsman for the Human Rights Commission for the state of Chihuahua, Mexico, said that since 2008, the rule of law has virtually ceased to exist. Homes, vehicles, and people are randomly searched without probable cause or search warrants. Sound, sounds kind of like here. <laughs> and fortunately... Many Mexicans, exhausted by six years of violence, have begun to accept the trade-off between their rights and a promised greater safety. Zamora said, for many people, if it helps reduce crime and violence, human rights violations are more likely to be tolerated. He also said, agreed that, or De La Rosa Hickerson agreed, saying, people would feel, rather feel safe than to have justice, which Reminds me of this quote from the classic movie, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, did you have me up, Tori? <laughs> Do it again, I'm sorry. Here we go. Again, this is a quote from Full Metal Jacket, a, a classic movie. Have you seen Full Metal Jacket, Tori? Many, many, many times. Yes, very good. I'd rather be alive than free, I guess. <laughs> rather be alive than free. This is what I'm afraid our country is starting to head down the road towards. People who believe the government, when it tells them if they will give up their freedom and liberty, then the government will take care of them and make everything safe. When in fact, that is a huge lie. The government cannot take all the risk out of life. And it cannot protect you from people intent on doing you harm. 
the best it can do is allow you to have the freedom to protect yourself. But as we often point out on this show, the government has no plans to give you back any of your rights, freedoms, or liberties it has taken from you. As for that quote from Full Metal Jacket, they'd rather be alive than free, here are some inspirational words from our past. This is no time for ceremony. The question before this house is one of awful moment to the country. For my part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. Are we disposed to be among the number of those who having eyes see not and having ears hear not the things which so nearly concern their temporal salvation? For my own part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear? Or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. For those of you who are sleeping in history class, <laughs> that was a speech by Patrick Henry. Admittedly, that is a shortened version I put together from the much longer speech. I should also note for those who maybe weren't even sleeping but skipping class altogether that day, that was, of course, a recreation of <laughs> Patrick what Henry's speech. About to say. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to be that old. Yeah. It was given on March 23rd, 1775, and the actor doing that is Richard Schumann. The voice recording, of course, had not been invented yet when Patrick Henry gave that speech. Now, if you'd like to read the entire speech, you can Google Patrick Henry and you will find many different websites with the full transcript. It is very inspirational to read, and I hope you take the time to do it. What it demonstrates is how seriously our founders took the issues of liberty and freedom. And if they could see what is happening in America today, they would probably lead an uprising against the government just like they did against the King of England. Although in modern times, they would be labeled kooks, domestic terrorists, and imprisoned for advocating posi the positions they did back then. Sad, really, that we have come this far. These people in Mexico are getting screwed over by our country's ridiculous pursuit of this unending drug war. A war we cannot win. How are you going to win a war against a practice that has been going on since mankind has been on this earth? Humans have always abused some sort of substance throughout history. It is going to happen. You cannot stop it. But fighting a war without an end does have its benefits. It gives the government another reason to restrict and, in some cases, outright steal our rights and freedoms. Plus, it gives all these companies supplying this cool, high-tech gear a market. And a government one at that. Governments are easy to sell things to because they are spending someone else's money. It is like shooting fish in a barrel. The sales reps, reps get rich. The owners of the companies get rich, and everyone feels great as our citizens' freedoms and liberties are flushed down the toilet. And all these people selling these whiz-bang items and lobbying the government for more and more money, to me, they are traitors selling out their fellow citizens for the almighty dollar. Just like Judas Iscariot from the Bible, these people are betraying their fellow Americans by lobbying for more money to purchase things to infringe the rights of the citizens of this country. Now, if you are one of these people, if you are selling things to the government that enable them to more easily violate the rights of your neighbors and friends, then yes, you are part of the problem. If you are one of the TSA employees, you are part of the problem. You may ask, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, this is how I earn my living. I'm sorry. The defense, quote, that's how I earn my living, does not excuse what you are doing. If you are part of this problem, then you need to man up or woman up and quit and find another line of work. Because you are an embarrassment to the founders and people who have fought hard for the rights that you are helping to strip away. Now, if it hurts for you to hear this again, I'll play this for you again. You can't have 
Bible the truth. And, <laughs> and, and the truth is, is what you're going to get on this show. And some people may call the truth ugly, as in the ugly truth, but I say the truth is beautiful. And like always trying to do the right thing, it allows you to sleep at night. If you are not one of these traitors helping our government violate the rights of your fellow citizens, then your responsibility is to put pressure on your representatives to stop all these fictional wars and start restoring to Americans their rights, liberties, and freedoms, which we all used to hold so dear, but are just being taken away right and left. Do you want to throw in anything? I no. Said, I was just, nope. I was just going to say calling it your job doesn't make it right. Exactly. Con, there's, yeah. There's a lot of Nazi guards that did that. <laughs> wow. So, that's pretty heavy, but you're right. But there, yeah, that's exactly. I was just doing my job, sir. That's what they'll tell you. Anyway, we're up on the last segment of the show. This is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show. We'll be back after these messages.